What's up, this is GM, and before I start, I want to tell you about TubeBuddy. In case you don't know, TubeBuddy is a free website that will help you manage and grow your YouTube channel. Thanks to them, some of my videos even show up as top results. Want to give them a try? Check the description below for the link. Today's product is H-Wing's HI200 Bluetooth Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. So inside the box, we have the keyboard itself. We have this little thing. It is a USB to USB-C adapter. I'll go over that in a bit. We have this little tool to remove keycaps. We have this cable, and this is if you want to use it wired. It has a USB end and a USB-C end. USB-C end goes into the keyboard. The USB end goes into your computer, your laptop, whatever device you may be using. And then we have a manual in English. All right, so let's go over some general info on this amazing little keyboard. And I'm not even joking, this keyboard is pretty neat. I love the fact that it can be used wired or Bluetooth. Let's start off by looking at the bottom of this keyboard. So this keyboard has four rubber pads. It also has an on off switch here for when you go to Bluetooth mode. And keep in mind, it doesn't have a kickstand. Personally, that doesn't bother me. I usually don't really use the kickstand anyways. You will notice that there is a difference in elevation there. It's gonna be a little hard for you to see there, but the back is a little bit wider than the bottom. So you already do get some of that elevation that you need when you're using a keyboard. So having a kickstand is not all that important. The uh, keycaps are double shot. Under the caps, we have a nice clicky blue switch, which is always a crowd pleaser. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and take off a key and show you right now. So let me go ahead and pull off center key right here and there we go go and pull that a little bit closer hopefully I can get that in focus you can see we got that nice clicky blue switch right there and I'm gonna go ahead and put the keycap back on and just a note if you wanted to take off the space bar what you need to do is actually take off some of the surrounding ones and then use your fingers to lift it off uh, obviously this is not gonna fit around it really. Um, at least I don't see any way for it to. Maybe you could get one end, but I wouldn't recommend that way because it's probably not the safest way to remove the space bar. It would honestly be easier to take off surrounding keys and then use your fingers to pluck it off. That's usually what I do at least. So we have 61 keys here. They're all conflict free. Keyboard works on Windows, Macs, PS4, Xbox, and even phones thanks to this USB-C adapter, as well as the fact that it is Bluetooth. Um, I've tried using both the adapter and I've tried using it via Bluetooth on my phone and on my laptop, both for gaming and just for typing purposes. And I actually found both ways worked pretty much the exact same. I didn't notice really any differences between them. Like there was no real latency. I didn't see any lag. I felt my performance was pretty equal even in games, which was a little bit surprising to me. I'm not gonna lie. I thought if I used in Bluetooth, it wasn't gonna be as good. But personally, I didn't notice any decrease in my performance. But you know, that's really up to you. I do love the fact that it does have the two options, wired and wireless. Right here is where you plug in the wire if you did wanna use the wire or if you just need to charge it. And then I want to go ahead and show you as well that might be a little hard to see, but under the caps or on the sides of the caps, it shows secondary functions. So if you were to press function and some of these, that will show you kind of what the other options are. Um, we have all of the F1 through F12. We've got delete. We've got the different things for changing the colors, the background schemes for changing speed, all that volume getting the arrow keys so you are going to notice there's no arrow keys on here but you can change the WASD and take arrow keys got calculator all that good stuff and like I said it might be a little hard to see when I just turn it like this but it'll be a lot easier to see when you actually have the keyboard and one thing to note is we have over here a Bluetooth 1, 2, 3, and 4 so what this allows you to do is you can pair four different devices to it at once. And so you can press function oh, function, and E to go to the first device that you have connected, function R to just switch over to the next one, function T, another one, function Y, another one, and you can just keep switching between them. And you might be thinking, what's the purpose of that? Well, let's say you're using this to do multiple tasks at once. You know, personally, I actually do need to sometimes use two different laptops at once, doing work on one, doing a different thing on another. So if I'm trying to type up something on one, 
I can just press function R to switch then over to the other device and start typing on that if I need to and just keep switching back and forth instead of using two different keyboards. And that kind of saves a little bit of space that way. Personally, I think it is a really nice idea that they've come up with and I like to use that. Um, it might not be as helpful for everyone. Personally, I do get quite a bit of use out of it. But yeah, let's get into a quick look at the wire too. As you can see, it did come with a Velcro strap that I've put back onto it. And this wire is about six and a half feet. The Bluetooth range is about 26 feet. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple quick soft taps throughout the keys so you can kind of hear how loose the keys are. So I'm gonna do some of the small keys and then the space and side keys. And then I'll let you know when I'm about to do full presses. So let's start off with the soft ones. So I don't know how much of that my camera was able to pick up, but the light touches were actually pretty quiet. I've had keyboards that are very loose and will be very wobbly and move around, especially the spacebar. The spacebar is usually very, very noisy even at light touches, but this one is very quiet. And I can go ahead and tell you why. It's because it's connected in three spots. I did check this earlier. We have the main connection in the center and then two sturdy connections on the side, one here, one here. So that keeps it from making too much noise. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do a full press on some of the keys just so you can hear them. And just to be sure that you can hear it well, I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer to my camera and I'm gonna press a few of the keys. So if you heard that well, you can tell it is very clicky. Personally, I think the clicking sound is probably similar to my other blue blue switch keyboards, maybe a little bit lighter, but I would say overall they are very clicky. And I actually like that they aren't extremely loud. I have had some that are a little too loud and they can be a little bit annoying, but I think this has a very good audio. So let's go ahead and take a look at the color schemes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my overhead light so it'll be a little easier to see the pattern on. All right, so I've gone ahead and turned off the lights in my room and I have it as a wired connection right now. I would go ahead and tell you if you're to turn on the Bluetooth, what you'll notice is that these four keys will light up based on which mode you're on. So if you're on Bluetooth and you're on E, the E will light up and start blinking to let you know it's in pairing mode. And once it pairs, it'll stop blinking. But I'm using a wired mode for now just so it doesn't die in the middle of this recording. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some of the functions. So you probably already know this if you've ever had a gaming keyboard before, but you need to hold function to start the pretty much process of doing anything on these keyboards. So function and L will turn on and off the keyboard. So you can see right here. And then we have a function and the brackets for decreasing and increasing brightness. So let's go ahead and decrease it one at a time. And then it blinks all white to let you know once you reach the max point. So let's increase it one at a time. And so now we're maxed out. Then you can press function and enter to change between the 18 different modes. So we'll go through them one by one. Uh, hopefully I don't lose track of all of them because 18 is a lot of lighting modes, but we can already see one of them, which is kind of a snaking pattern downward for a kind of rainbow pattern going down. So now we kind of have a winged pattern. So from the center, it looks like it's winging outward. Now we kind of have a snake pattern going down and up. So as you can see, it's kind of going across like that. And now this is just kind of a randomness, a random assortment of colors going everywhere. And now we have it kind of shooting from the top left to the bottom right and back. And now we have it just all lit up and it is just one color. You can switch colors. Um, believe that would be function and the, where is that key? Is that? Nope. Oh, here we go. That's how you switch the colors. Function and the back bracket right there. As you can see, we can switch them one color at a time. It does have a lot of color options. 
So let's go ahead and switch to the next mode. So function and enter. And now we have from the center, it's radiating outward a nice color. This is actually one of my personal favorite ones. Matches my laptop pretty well because I have an Alienware that has a similar type of lighting pattern. And now we have kind of a cycling between all of the colors. I'll let that play for just a little bit. Now we have a breathing mode. As you can see, it's got a unison color across, but you can also switch them to one specific color. I'm just going to cycle through them really quickly, get back to that rainbow, we'll get the white, and then back to the rainbow version. And now we have it to where it is green in the center going outward. Again, you can switch that. And as you can see, it does have a nice little look to it. So let's go to the next one. Here we have it snaking towards the right. Here we have it snaking across again, but it's a little bit more smooth looking. You can't really notice the changes in it. This one, I don't even know what to call it. I think it's kind of radiating outward from the center, maybe going in a circle. Kind of hard for me to tell because it is so fast. And now this one is wherever I press, it'll shoot out from. And now, wherever I press, it'll light up. And each time I press, it'll light up a different color. Again, unless I change that. I'm not going to show the fact that you know you can choose specific colors for every mode or whichever modes it does have, because that will take a lot of time. Because you'll get the idea you know, after pressing a few of these. Oop, wrong key. And now, if I press, it shoots outward from wherever I press. So if I was to press a couple keys just to show you. And now we have kind of a rainbow, kind of, I don't even know what to call it. It literally just looks like a rainbow everywhere. And now we have it just kind of scattering everywhere. Now we have it kind of going downward. And now we're going back to the flying pattern. Okay, so I went ahead and just went to this mode so I could show you that you can increase and decrease the speed of these. So in order to decrease, you'd press function and this key right here, the colon semicolon, and this is how you know that you've reached the slowest speed. I'm gonna speed it up to the max. And now we've maxed it out. You might be able to notice it's going a little faster. I'll switch to a different mode so it might be a little easier to tell. So here is the slowest. As you can see, it's very, very gradual. I'm going to let it go and go down a bit, and now I'm going to max it out. And now you'll see it's going a lot quicker than before. So that's for that. If you want to switch the WASD to arrow keys, you'd hold function and W for about three seconds. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. And obviously, there's not really any way to tell. But on my computer, I can see that it has switched now into arrow keys. You'd hold it again. And now it is WASD once again. Uh, personally, I like the fact that you can switch it like that. I think that's a very good way to kind of work that out. So yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know lighting wise. That's everything you really need to know function wise. I've already shown you the F1 through F12, how those kind of are up here. And just in case you need to know, you can do a factory reset on it. Uh, I don't think you'd really need to, but you can look in your manual for how to do that if that is something you need to do. But overall, I think everything that you really need to know is pretty much golden. So I like the fact that it does have all of these different lighting modes. You can change the speed, change the brightness. As you can see, decreased all the way, maxed out all the way. All that good jazz. I personally like how you can do all that. Um, that is pretty standard for a mechanical gaming keyboard. However, some can fall short of a really good light mode. Some just go above and beyond. I think these this is one of those keyboards that does go above and beyond, especially with the four Bluetooth modes. Uh, let's talk about gaming though. So I did use it in three games. I usually only test on two, but lately I've been testing on three. I tried it out on CSGO, Valorant, and Paladins. And for all three, both wired and Bluetooth, I found it to work great. I had no noticeable latency, everything, was perfect. My performance seemed to be 
about the same as it always has been. Uh, I've tried about three to four matches for each game, and you know, obviously the first few does take a little while to get used to, by, but by the end, I did see that I was doing just as well as I always do. Overall, great keyboard. And if you'd like one of these keyboards for free, check out a giveaway I'm gonna be doing very soon for this, two other keyboards by this company, High Wings, as well as this mouse pad that I have behind it, which right now you won't be able to see too well, but definitely be on the lookout for that if you wanna get a free one of these keyboards. All right, thank you for watching. If you want this product, check the link in the description below, and you can always leave a comment below if you need any help or have any comments. Thank you very much for watching.